Welcome to the captivating journey of Homo sapiens across the Bering Strait from Siberia to Alaska during the Ice Age. Discover how this pivotal event shaped the peopling of North America, occurring approximately 15,000 years before the modern era. The journey was not easy. The explorers faced harsh conditions, with freezing temperatures and treacherous terrain. To survive, they had to rely on their resourcefulness and survival skills, such as starting fires and hunting for food. Finally, they reached the New World, filled with new horizons and opportunities for exploration and settlement. How exactly did the peopling of America occur? Previously, it was believed that the peopling of America occurred in just one migration, but recent genetic studies, mostly led by David Reich and the Harvard Lab, have identified that there were at least two distinct waves of migration into America from Siberia. The very first wave of migration into America from Siberia is called Paleo American. Paleo American population had shared ancestry with not only East Asians, but also with the Europeans and Middle Easterners, due to common ancient North Eurasian heritage. Ancient North Eurasians were a Paleolithic group of hunter-gatherers who inhabited Siberia in the Ice Age. Although it is difficult to pinpoint when exactly the last migration into America occurred, or if there was a third wave of migration that occurred between the Paleo Amerindians and the Paleo Eskimos, we can know for a fact but there was definitely a second wave of migration into America. The second wave of migrants into America resembled modern Siberians and are ancestral to natives of Canada and Greenland, but not to natives of South or Central America. Modern indigenous Americans who have the highest proportion of ancestry from this second wave of migration tend to have more East Eurasian facial traits such as epicanthic folds, big cheekbones, and straighter hair. This ancestry peaks in the north of the two American continents, and reaches the highest portion in unmixed East Greenlanders, according to data from the Eurogenes K13 project on GEDmatch. South American natives resemble the very first migrants into America the most, with minimal admixture from the following migration waves. The apparent differences in South American and Central American facial traits, and the facial traits of indigenous Arctic folk is due to this difference in ancestry. One strong evidence of the connection between modern Siberians and modern indigenous peoples of Canada and Alaska are the apparent vocabulary and structural similarities between Yeniseean languages of Central Siberia and the Nadine languages of Alaska and Canada. Let's start by exploring the Yeniseean languages of Central Siberia. These languages are spoken by the indigenous peoples of the Yenisei River region. They share remarkable similarities with the Nadine languages spoken by the indigenous peoples of Alaska and Canada. Despite the vast geographical distance between these regions, the linguistic connections between them are undeniable. One of the most fascinating aspects of these linguistic connections is the apparent vocabulary and structural similarities between the Yeniseean and Nadine languages. Words for common objects, animals, and even grammatical structures show striking resemblances. This suggests a shared ancestral language and a close historical and cultural relationship between the Siberian and North American indigenous peoples. While the linguistic connections between the Yeniseean and Nadine languages are evident, it is believed that these language groups have diverged relatively recently. This highlights the close historical and cultural ties between the Siberian and North American indigenous peoples. Exploring these connections not only sheds light on the linguistic heritage of these regions but also deepens our understanding of their shared history. Compared to the American natives of the South and Central America, American Eskimos are actually closer to East Asians and Siberians, while South and Central Americans are closer to West Eurasians and Europeans. Speaking of the first migration wave, that wave carried with itself a majority of ancient North Eurasian ancestry. One of the key components that connects Native Americans, Europeans, 
and South Asians is the ancient North Eurasian component. This component can be found in varying proportions in different populations, but out of all modern humans it peaks in South American natives. Interestingly, some South American groups have up to 50% of the ancient North Eurasian component in their genetic makeup. This suggests a strong connection between these populations and the ancient Upper Paleolithic Siberian population. On the other hand, indigenous peoples of the Arctic exhibit lower proportions of the ancient North Eurasian component. This is due to the fact that most of the ancestry is derived from the second wave of migration, and is heavy in modern Siberian, rather than Paleolithic Siberian ancestry. North American natives such as Eskimos score more East Asian and less ancient North Eurasian ancestry than the natives of South and Central America. As you can see here, ancient North Eurasian ancestry is also present in Europeans and people of the Caucasus and South Central Asia. Join my community here on YouTube by subscribing. My channel features hundreds of ancient genomes and links to download their raw data in 23andMe format. But I don't only focus on humans. On my channel you will find gorilla, chimpanzee, and orangutan genomes too. I have been developing all kinds of tools for manipulation of DNA data. Those that are free you can find on my GitHub. Goodbye.